Welcome to the Book Publishing Success Program with Brian Heathman, publisher of Made for Success Publishing and author and speaker, Mark Bowser. Join us as we go in-depth on the art of writing and best practices to become a best-selling author. And now, here's Brian Heathman. Welcome to the Book Publishing Success Podcast Show with Brian Heathman and Mark Bowser. I'm Brian, publisher of Made for Success Publishing, and today we've got uh, Mark Bowser on the line, who is an experienced author and professional speaker. Today, we'd like to take some time to talk about some different styles, kind of some unique styles for writing nonfiction books. Mark, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Brian. It's good to be able to be with you again. And I'm looking forward to uh, this particular uh, episode. How this came about is from an article that uh, Brian wrote, and I said, we've got to do an episode on that. That's something that people need to hear. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. We've talked a lot about structuring nonfiction books in the past and so forth. Can you kind of briefly describe and refresh our listeners, Brian, in terms of how does a traditional structure work for a nonfiction-like business book? Sure. Yeah. No, that's a great question. So about once a month, I get authors that fly to Seattle to our corporate offices and go through this process that I call draft a book in a weekend. And for many years now, we've been using what I call a traditional format where we first develop the master theme of the book. Then we organize that theme into, you know, anywhere from eight to 12 chapters. Typically, you know, some books go as long as 20 chapters. But then each chapter gets broken down into three major parts or three main ideas. And for a long time, I've been coaching authors to never make a point without telling a story and never tell a story without making a point. So each of those three ideas per chapter are kind of then uh, organized into a set of stories and a set of points. Then at the end of that program, we put together an introduction and a conclusion And there you have it. You've got the outline for a nonfiction book. And that's our episode for today. No, just kidding, folks. (laughs) Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. But this is an exciting thing because this is a stumbling block that many authors have. They don't know where to start. And a story is a great way to start. And most of the time when people are writing a, a business book, they don't think about a story. They don't think about how the emotions impact their readers. They just think about the logic, the reasoning part of how to solve whatever the business challenge is, whether it's sales or leadership or what have you. Sure. But what grabs them is obviously that story. Now, you talk a little bit about in the past about what's called a hero's journey format. Can you explain to our listeners what is the hero's journey and what is the history that goes behind that? Yeah. For a long time, I've been given thought to this model, I guess, of the hero's journey, which is effectively the type of thing that professional screenwriters and novelists use commonly to structure the format of the book. But what I've been kind of mulling around is trying to establish a method where we could use the storytelling power of the hero's journey and apply that to a nonfiction manuscript. So let's start off with um, maybe a little history on okay, that sounds good. Journey. Okay, so there's this uh, gentleman back in, oh man, I think it was in the 30s. His name is Joseph Campbell, and he wrote a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces. In that book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, Joseph Campbell, he compiled a little over 2,000 years of folklore, religion, and myths into one overarching model. And this work established kind of the story structure that's come to be known as the hero's journey. And the interesting thing, Mark, is that when you take a look at the structure of the hero's journey, you can actually see this thing playing out in a lot of modern movies and a lot of classic movies. So like the original Star Wars movie, which is what, episode Episode four, a new four. Okay, thank you. (laughs) I'm Um, a Star Wars guy. (laughs) Yeah. So that episode follows clearly follows this model of the hero's journey. And, you know, if you watch Harry Potter movies, uh, it certainly carries out, uh, you know, a movie that I've watched several times called The Matrix definitely uses this kind of thing. 
And it's been said that these stories in this model have become part of kind of our DNA as a society. Um, and they've kind of become a, something that the human race craves in kind of how we like to concern stories. I agree. It's a, a story is something that people remember. Even Jesus said, use a story. He taught in parables. People remembered the story. And in a way, we use that in our book, Sell Success. We used a story that framed following this hero's journey format, framed mm -hmm. this sales guy who was struggling to where he reached sales success. It's a business book, but it used the story type format. So what is that uh, format? There's a three-step method, Brian, that usually the hero's journey follows. Can you explain to the listeners what that is? Yeah. You know, I think in uh, Joseph Campbell's original kind of presenting this storytelling method of the hero's journey, he put a 17-point outline together for structuring um, stories in this format. But ultimately, the model flows three main ideas, or what I call three different sections. And Mark, I think the point that you bring out about the book that you wrote called Sales Success is a perfect idea. So you took a nonfiction topic the topic of learning sales skills, and you put it into the story of a struggling salesperson who was having a hard time with his career, and then he overcame certain things by being mentored by this character that you invented named Digger Jones. So Hero's Journey follows these three main sections. So it usually starts with what we call the initiation phase or the departure. And this is where the status quo is basically established for the hero of the story. So life is steadily going along and it looks like, you know, going to be business as usual. Nothing's going to change. Life is just effectively plodding along. And you can even see that even the plodding along can be either good, it can be bad, or it can be neutral. In the, like in the case of Harry Potter, you mentioned earlier in the first Harry Potter, you see this kid struggling. His life is terrible. People, he has no friends. His family, so-called family, hates him. Mm -hmm. And there's no sign of any change happening. And right. so it can yeah. be good or bad, but they seem stagnant in that departure stage, don't they? Interesting. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And the existing state can actually be fantastic through the lens of many people. But oftentimes a fantastic situation tends to stagnate our potential as human beings. So the second section of this model, the hero's journey, is the transformation section. Now, in the transformation stage, something happens, like it's a catalyst, and it brings the hero face to face with some sort of major crisis. Perhaps he meets up with an old soul, a wise one who mentors him. Now, the hero can either make a decision to pursue greatness or else... Greatness is thrust upon him. So he pursues the goal, and in the process, he's transformed, never to be the same again. And this typically is how the hero gains knowledge he could have never acquired in any other way. Hmm. That's interesting. You mentioned that it's usually some sort of a mentor, like we have in, uh, in Harry Potter. You got Professor Dumbledore. In Star Wars, Luke has uh, Ben Kenobi. In Cell Success, Jack Scott Digger Jones and so forth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And in fact, uh, other nonfiction books like The Angel Inside by Chris Widener, mm. the young man who's the hero in the journey, he actually gets mentored by the ghost of uh, Michelangelo. So it's kind of an interesting thing. So we talked about, you know, the departure phase of the hero's journey where life's steadily plodding along. Then we talk about the transformation stage where something happens, some sort of a catalyst. Oftentimes, a mentor shows up and encourages the hero to pursue greatness. The third area of the flow or the third section is what we call the return. And this is where the hero goes back to his or her previous environment or their previous way of life, armed with the wisdom, the attitude, and this new experience in a way that actually helps and serves the lives of others. So when you really break it down and you look at the three main sections of the hero's journey, you can kind of see how this could apply to a nonfiction uh, type environment, like perhaps learning sales skills. So Mark, maybe you can tell a little bit about your experience using this model with sales success. 
Well, uh, Brian, with Sell Success, I think I kind of stumbled onto it. And, <laughs> really? Yeah, and because it wasn't something that I, I specifically thought out the journey as you just described it in the hero's journey. But my subconscious did. And here's what I say about this. Stephen King, in his book on, on writing, which I do highly recommend for folks who are authors, he talks about that you learn through the process of reading other work. And he says... How do you get better as a writer? You read a lot and you write a lot. And he says, even though you're not necessarily, when you're reading a novel of somebody else's in this case, he says, you're not necessarily thinking about what can I learn through this, but good or bad. If it's a bad author or bad writing, I should say, you learn from that. If it's a classic, you learn from that. And mm -hmm. so I think, I think in the process of sell success, the way of telling a story kind of was in me because I'd experienced it through so much reading that I've done. And in our case, in that book, it's, uh, we took a fictional story, fictional characters that we created and developed it out of that. And, and that worked very, very well. Mm -hmm. And so the lessons that we taught from a business standpoint are taught by the mentor, by the mentor Digger Jones sets people up, his prodigy Jack, with ideas that come from actual business leaders, in this case, sales leaders. Okay. And like Zig Ziglar and Tom Hopkins. And he tees it up in the fictional story with the real life solutions. Now, as a publisher, Brian, I got a question because there's probably some authors out there going, you know, that sounds great, but oh man, I have no clue how to write fiction. So how can I use the hero's journey in the story, even though I don't write fiction? Is it possible to use real life stories in that? Well, yeah, it is. In fact, uh, I think for the nonfiction author who is getting started uh, organizing their book, you can basically break down the project into six steps to use this hero's journey format. So to start, step number one is to split your idea, your big idea or the main theme of your book into three sections. And again, we talked about the departure section, the transformation section, and the return section. Step two is to split these three sections into chapters. And the formula that I recommend is perhaps creating about three to four chapters per section. So, for instance, to set up the, uh, the departure or, you know, this is basically status quo, you would organize that into three to four sections to kind of set the tone. And each of those three to four sections within that departure phase can be a separate chapter. Step okay. three is then to organize each of those chapters that you've created in your master outline into three points. So if you're in a section, you know, the second chapter that you want to write about the establishing the status quo of the hero in the departure section, you can organize that into three major points. Step four is then go into your memory or actually you can get creative or you can take stories from other people and use those stories to illustrate each of the three main points. And that gets back to that whole philosophy of never make a point without telling a story and never tell a story without making a point. Step five in this process is basically we're going to borrow some kind of things from the art of story craft where, you know, the author can use fresh story with some new characters each time they illustrate a new point. And that kind of keeps the idea flowing. It keeps the book focused not on ourselves. Oftentimes, we as nonfiction authors will talk about some successes that we've had. But oftentimes, the power of a book talks about the successes that other people are having. So using some fresh stories and some new characters is step five to kind of uh, truly make this story craft work. And then the final point, which is the sixth point of kind of getting started using the hero's journey is develop kind of a overarching storyline in your work and then kind of chronicle the struggle of your hero that's gone through the entire thing. So you have your central character, somebody who's relatable to your target audience, and then there's an arc of the story that starts from the departure and goes all the way to the return. With those six things structured and laid out on paper, then any author can start to leverage the tremendous power of using the hero's journey to structure their nonfiction manuscript. I love it. 
I love it. This is a great way for you to grab readers because people love stories. Fiction sells way outsells nonfiction. So yeah. this is a way that we yeah. can get our nonfiction books to begin to grab more readers who strive for that emotion, who love that emotion, and we can grab it with the story. I've got one more question. I know we don't have too much time left, but uh, my question I know that is in some of our probably newer authors that are listening today is this, Brian. Which comes first, the story or my business idea or business solution? It's a good question, Mark. And I think the, you know, when you're writing a nonfiction book, I think we all kind of leverage our given areas of expertise first. So I think the kind of the theme of the book will be triggered by your experience or your passions or the topic that you're interested in. Then you start to come up with a structure of the hero's journey. So let's just uh, recap that here as in Mark, as you're right, we are kind of getting to the end of our timeline. So um, when you take a look at maybe an example or kind of the structure again of the overarching story where you take your passion or your expertise that you want to build your nonfiction manuscript around, you first start with a departure. And this is where typically the hero receives some sort of a call to action or a call to adventure. At first, he's reluctant to heed the call. However, a mentor figure enters the equation and helps him see this as a necessity. And he heads out on a mystical adventure or a quest. And this calling uh, for the departure can be accidental, it can be deliberate, or it could actually be imposed on the central character by a third party. The second major section of the hero's journey is this transformation section. And this is where the hero is initiated into a new world. He's either alone or is entering this with companions. He encounters maybe some obstacles and eventually fulfills his goal. And through the ages, you know, we've seen many myths that have dealt with transformation like this. And um, through that, the hero's consciousness shifts from being self-centric to selfless through this struggle. And then finally, the return phase. The hero goes back into his normal world with the wisdom and the powers that he's gained through this transformational experience. And he then offers them as a gift to his friends, his coworkers, his loved ones, his comrades, and all of society benefits from this sacrifice and this transformation. If you take a look at the arc of your story through this three-part structure of the hero's journey, starting with the departure, the transformation, and the return, I think you're on to a tremendous start to make your nonfiction work extremely readable and interesting. I love it, Brian. This is the most exciting way to write. And so I encourage our readers, give it a try. If you've never done the hero's journey or never written stories within your work, now's the time to do it. People love stories and people buy stories. Yep, that is for sure. So we want to thank you once again for coming in and taking a listen to the Book Publishing Success Podcast with Mark Bowser and myself, Brian Heathman. Uh, we encourage you to pursue the art of writing uh, seriously and using the hero's journey as a framework, we think is a real exciting way to take a, what can be a fairly normally dry subject and make it very interesting to read and turn your next book into a bestseller. Thanks for joining us. You've been listening to the book publishing success podcast with the publisher of made for success publishing and author Mark Bowser. Subscribe to this podcast to stay in the know on the latest writing and publishing tips for aspiring authors. Contact us at madeforsuccesspublishing.com and markbowser.com. Thanks for listening today.